so. <laughs> wow, okay. All right, what's going on everybody? This is a brand new channel. I am going to be bringing photography, videography, music, golf, cars, adventures, whatever. I'm gonna bring it all. I'm gonna try to do everything I possibly can. It's not gonna be one type of genre. A lot of stuff will probably look really cool like this, kind of cinematic, moody. I'm just gonna kind of do what I can to Honestly, just put out content that I would love to see and that I love doing. And if you guys love it, then that's awesome too. So today, we're gonna talk about lighting because I realized really quickly that to do this, to do anything like this, you kind of need a good lighting setup because if you don't, it's gonna look like this. And yeah, that kind of looks like trash. One of my lights already died, so if this kind of looks off, that's why. But this video will be shot over the course of a few days, and in these few days, we're gonna kind of be making like a budget lighting setup, and then, you know, eventually as the channel grows, I'll just get like real lights and better stuff and whatever. But I thought it'd be cool today to show you guys that you don't need a lot to achieve a lot. So yeah, I think this look is pretty cool. I honestly like the warm and the blues and the dark and whatever. So let me show you what was used in today's setup, and we'll go from there. into unboxing all the goodies that we got from Amazon and start building this light. I wanna show you really quick what I'm gonna to do to light this set. What you see right now is just all the house lights on. I've got the kitchen lights on, I have the living room lights on, hallway lights, just a whole flood of a lot of light. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn all these lights off. I'm gonna add a key light, I'm gonna add a reflector, I'm gonna add a rim light, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, now that I've got all the lights off, I've added my key light. Now this light may need some adjusting when we add the reflector and the rim light later on, but this is step one, now let's add the reflector. Okay, so now we're ready to add our rim light. And the rim light is going to just put a nice line around the right side of my body here, and it's gonna offer a lot of dimension to the set. So it's not just gonna be two lights up front. Adding this third one from behind is really gonna set the rim light. Okay, so now that we've got our rim light in, the last step is to add ambient light or practical lights. So practical lights, they'll be sitting in the background and you'll actually be able to see the bulb or whatever kind of light that you're using. It's going to serve as more of a decorative purpose and accentuate the depth that we're building in our set right now. Okay, and as you can see from my practicals, I chose to use just a lamp that was already in the background and an old LED strip that I found in my closet turned it to blue and added some cool decoration and it made the set kind of pop a little bit. So let's get to the unboxing and start building this light. All right, so we've got our LED strip, we've got our mock softbox, and we've got the power cable to power the LED strip, and we've got a light mount by Small Rig. And while I was on Amazon, I ordered the 5-in-1 reflector pack. All right, and without further ado, let's get into this pie pan. Okay, this is actually a pretty good size. This is the 14-inch uh, by 3-inch round pie pan from Amazon. I will put the link in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. So first, I will be applying the LED strip to the edges of the pie pan. And what you wanna make sure is when you're getting the LED strip, you wanna make sure that it says daylight in the name of the LED strip. Daylight is just gonna be the most natural and acceptable output for the type of light that we'll be looking for here today. Okay, so I finished applying the LED strip to the outside of our pie pan. Now applying the LED strip to the outside of the pie pan, it's going to allow the light to bounce this way and not be so directive to the subject. And that's gonna help really make that soft, lighted look. Now let's go ahead and plug these in. One, make sure they work. And two, get an idea of what kind of output we're working with. Wow. Okay, uh, as you can see, that is pretty bright. If I were to just use that now as a replacement for my key light, I don't know, I feel like that's a pretty good output. One thing I wanna do before moving on to adding the screen over the front of this pie pan to use as our softbox is I wanna see if putting aluminum foil in the bottom of this pie pan will increase the intensity of our light. Now let's 
go ahead and test and see if our intensity has brightened any. I think it helped a little bit, kind of hard to tell right now. I think we'll really notice once we get our screen on. Now this is a two yard by 60 inch diffuser by Neuer. We could either double it up and make our soft box diffuser a bit thicker. And that won't allow for as much light to come through. I think we should test it before cutting and see what kind of diffusion we like. And then we'll go from there. So it looks like I've decided I'm gonna cut one circle's worth of diffusion. And from there, I'll cut a few more just in case I want a few more layers of diffusion, less intensity on the light or more intensity by taking some off. Okay, so we've got our piece cut out here, and I figured the best way to probably attach this on here is just to get a few large rubber bands. I didn't really want to deal with like gluing or clips around the whole outside, so let's just see how rubber bands work. All right, so we got our diffuser placed on the pie pan, and now let's see how soft our light is. Wow, I actually really like that. What do you guys think? I don't know, I'm kind of just digging this one one layer diffuser right now. I mean, obviously I have a ton more material to cut out more diffusers, but I think for right now, so far, I think this is gonna be pretty good. Okay, and now let's add the small rig super clamp with quarter inch and three eighth inch thread. Okay, and there you go. I was trying to think of a really secure way to put this small rig clamp on there, but just attaching it to the rim of the pie pan seems to work out great. I mean, you kind of have to really tighten it down, but then your quarter inch thread is right here, and then you just slap that on top of a light stand, and you're good to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this key light with this pie pan light and see if we can tell the difference. Okay, wow. What do you guys think? Um, so far, I mean, I haven't seen it in the camera yet, but I think I, I think it's definitely brighter than that ring light that I had there. And it's gonna be nice to kind of free that up for just whatever, some filler light. But let's switch back to the 35 and see what this looks like. <clears throat> All right, so now, just like that, we have made a mock Aperture 120D out of a $14 pie pan from Amazon with a little bit of diffuser screen and $9 LED strip. Okay, so first thoughts, I can feel it really casting the light pretty evenly. Now, like I said, we do have a lot more of that fabric, so if we wanted to put on three, four layers, I think that would really soften up the light even more so. One thing that others have been saying about this light is it's just not very strong. So the aluminum foil was in hopes to increase some intensity, but I would say it's definitely worth it. So let's jump back into the studio. And just like that, I mean, look at this thing. You cannot beat it. You can't. For $40, I mean, we've got ourselves a new key light. No, it's not an Aperture 120D. It's not anything super crazy. It doesn't have any dimming or Calvin adjustments, but I mean like it's plug in and go. And I think that's another really cool thing about it. It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess some people would prefer having battery powered lights, but one thing I don't really like about battery powered lights is as you can see in my intro, I had a battery powered light die on me. And yes, I could have just reshot that clip, but I wanted to prove a point saying like, hey, your lights can die sometimes. And this thing, you can just plug it in and it's always gonna be powered, always at the brightest intensity, which could be a con, but I mean like, if you wanna add diffusers to decrease the intensity, then you can go ahead and do that. I mean, we've got plenty of that silk left. I think this is a great little project. Lighting just does so much. I think we're gonna try to set up a few more situations. I'm gonna do a little like product shot thing with this and see how suitable it is for like shooting product movement. But I mean, in this situation right here, lighting a human subject, I think it's doing great so far. I think what we've got is a really good start and I'm excited to see what happens.
thoughts. I'm gonna rate this a eight out of 10, just because it is now my most intense light and it's gonna be my main key light for probably a little bit now. I don't think you can go wrong and I had a lot of fun making it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I think if you guys were like on the fence of like deciding whether or not you wanted to make this high pan light, I'd say go for it. And so again, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for next week. I'll be doing something totally different, kind of keep it like a vlog style vibe to it though, and we're just gonna roll with it. I'm really excited about this year, and thank you again. Like, this is gonna be so much fun, and I'm just so glad I'm gonna be able to share this with you guys. So, until next time, save some money, make some pie pan lights, stay creative, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.